Hello, welcome back to this program on the traditional ballot index. Again, this is Robert Waltz, the editor of the index. This part is specifically about how to use the index online and to look up files that way. If you want to learn about the downloaded version or our software, those are covered in other videos, so feel free to shut me off right now. To use the index online, you want to start at the ballot index main page, the link shown near the top of your screen here. This is where you go to find all the ballot index content, download things, things like that. But we put the most important links at the very top. The song list, the online index, the bibliography, and the discography, as well as the what's new, which is the updates and what we put in in each version. The bibliography and the discography are pretty straightforward. Clicking on the bibliography will show you the list of all the book abbreviations in the index because we use abbreviations to keep the text relatively short. So if you look up a song and it has a reference to, say, Abernathy, you'll know that that's a reference to Francis Edward Abernathy's Singing Texas, which was published in 1994. Songs in this book are cited by page, so the, the index reference will have a page number for it. This is in contrast to books like Child's English and Scottish Popular Ballads, where we cite by the ballad number or the child number. This is one of the index books that I indexed, see, my name, and we added it in version 4.5, so it was added relatively recently because we're up now at version 5.1. If you go, to, go down three items, you'll notice that there are several books by Roger Abrahams here. One of them is Abrahams W.I. Shanties, which is Roger Abrahams' Deep the Water, Shallow the Shore, a book of shanties from the West Indies. So, hence the W.I. and the shanties and all those words. This is one, this one is also cited by Page, but this one was indexed by my leading collaborator, Ben Schwartz. For this one, there, there's not just a bibliography, bibliographic data, but there's also this note about what's actually in the book and why it was assembled and how it works the way it does. So that a lot of these things, you notice the purple notes on a, a number of the books. These are to help you understand more about that particular book. The main part of the bibliography is devoted to book abbreviations, but near the end is a list of authors. If you know the author of a book and don't know the title we used or the abbreviation we used, you can use this book to, go, to search for abbreviations. So... If you knew Abernathy, you could go see, and we have a book, Abernathy. If you go down below the list of authors, which is quite a long list now, we have a list of indexers and the books that they indexed. I've been, if you look over that list, I've been the number one contributor, but you can see that the index really wouldn't be the same without Ben Schwartz's contribution, and also... Paul Stamler has made contributions much greater than this list of books would indicate because he's done almost all of the indexing of 78 RPM recordings, quite a few LPs and CDs as well, plus he's done a lot of proofreading. The other people here have contributed as well. So let's go back to the table of contents, or the, go back to the main page, I mean. If you go to the discography, it's similar in format, just a list of recordings by various people. Uh, with a description of what's in the recording. Some of these are listed by the performer. Some of them are listed by where they're from, Be particularly the anthologies. They're listed by the name of the record rather than the performer. So that should be, that's, I think, pretty straightforward. So that's how you get to the abbreviations in, of books and songs. Let's actually go ahead and dig into the index. There are two ways to find songs in, in the index, the song list and the online index. We'll start with the song list, which is, in effect, an index of the ballot index. It's a big file, more than two megabytes, so it may take a little while to load. This really is basically just a list of song titles with links to the actual songs. So the first one says, 10th MTB Flotilla Song, followed by the words cross-reference. If you click on that one, it won't take you to a song titled 10th MTB Flotilla Song, 
it will take you to Fred Carnot's army, which is what we think is the more generic name for this song, which in a Royal Navy version became the 10th motorboat flotilla song, but it's we consider it the same song. So the contents list f lets you find a song either by its standard title or by one of its alternate titles. In this case, you were able to find it by 10th MTB Flotilla Song, even though the song was Fred Carnot's Army. But if you know the preferred title, and the standard title that we use, you get a little bit more information. If you go down a few lines to 413 Squadron, you'll see that there is, that it has only one reference there are five kilobytes of notes, which means about 800 words, and that it is route number 29404. So, so this one little line here gives you a hint about how popular the song is, not especially since there's only one reference. Didn't exactly take the world by storm, and gives you a hint about how much documentation accompanies the song. So you can see in this particular case, the notes on the song are most of the entry. There's just a little bit of information about the song itself and the references. This is actually more information about the song than is, Hop than is in Hopkins' original book. There's one other thing to note when you click on the online entry for the song, and that's that the ROUD number is a link. If you click on that, it will take you to the ROUD entries for the song at the Vaughn Mil Williams Memorial Library. That takes a little longer because it's having to go over the, across the ocean. If you look, it's the same reference. See, again, it's a reference to Hopkins that we had in our index. It was Hopkins, and the other one was Hopkins. There's one other trick about the contents list. It's location independent. If you don't want to wait for your browser downloads two megabytes of song titles every time you want to look at the song list, you can download and save the whole thing to your hard disk, and instead of reloading it from CSU Fresno every time, you can just launch it from your hard disk in your browser, and the links will still work. I'll admit I'm proud of being, I'm proud of that particular trick. That's about all there is to say about the contents list, the song list, because it's just a list of song titles. So let's go back to the main in, main page and go to the link called Online Index which is the link to do actual searches based on the contents of the song. You'll see at the top that there's a link that'll let you get to the contents list. But the main item here on this page is the big white search box. This is, which is a search of the index based on Google's search algorithm. Don't worry, we aren't paying anything to Google. Don't worry. And there are surprisingly few ads, although you may see one once in a while. If we click in the search box, we can enter search terms that we'd like to look up. So let's look up golden vanity. We type in those words. Well, we try to type in those words. We type in those words and click the search button or press enter. And it brings up this list of songs. All of these have mentions of the golden vanity. The first one you'll see is the golden vanity itself. And you can tell that the first line is the song title of that particular entry. Each listing shows you the song name, the link to the location, which isn't much use here because they're all going to be something at CSU Fresno or Fresno State, I mean. Uh, so the link address isn't much use to you. Then below that, there's a little bit of the text of the song which, in which it shows the words being found. So you can, if you want, click on the link for one of the songs, and it will show you that entry in a new window. So there's the Golden Vanity, and that's lots and lots and lots of references. If you don't like the results of the find, or are done looking over that those songs, you can click the Close button to get back to the search page. So let's do another one, this time for Graf Spee. I must be on a C battle kick. Actually, I'm doing the ones that I do because, well, I know exactly what I'm going to get in the way of songs. and results. This, surprisingly to me, gives more hits than the other one. They're sorted, since, not, since one of the first one is mentioned in the actual name again, 
they're sort of roughly, other than that one, they're sort of roughly in order of relevance, although I might have put the third one, the Noble Eighth of December, at number two rather than number three, because this one and this one have the most notes. But you don't know that till you do the search. So this shows you the various songs, and there are actually two pages of them, so you could go to page two to see one of, to see one of them. Note, that, note when you do a search, you don't have to search by title. This search looks at the whole entry. So if we try searching for Canada Squadron, Canada Squadron, got it right that time, we get, we'll get several hits, even though there is no song with the title Canada Squadron. And that's really most of what you need to know to search the index online. To summarize, you can either use the song list to search by titles, or you can use the online index search to search for anything. Either one will take you to the, the formatted HTML version of that particular song in the index. We'll talk about ways to, other ways to access the index in other videos.